famines, wars, growing poverty. People will eventually realize the economic mechanisms behind this, further opening the gate. Same for technological unemployment. Half of all jobs have already been automated. And while nations have compensated by giving basic income, the system contradiction is still clear. What happens when people realize this welfare program is really just an excuse to keep the labor system in place? Hence keeping the ruling class in place. You assume too much, John. Three quarters of the people on that planet believe in supernatural beings that live in the sky, affecting their lives. You're projecting your rare intelligence upon a sea of glorified savages. And if you think the activist community has anything in their toolkit to even approach system level change, you're not paying attention to their ignorance. You mean the spectacle? People piling into free speech zones? Holding up signs, yelling at buildings, ranting on social media, creating political art, poetry, writing books, making movies. I agree, it's mostly catharsis. It's a pressure release valve, easing periodic tension, making people feel like they're actually doing something. Aside, of course, from helping the economy, the anti-establishment market has been increasingly profitable. <laughs> yes. The anger dollar. If only such outrage could be packaged and traded on Wall Street, right? <laughs> <laughs> and then social change might have a chance. <laughs> <laughs> but catharsis aside, John, the real issue is hope. Activism today is a hope industry. Take Concordia. It's been irritating, and I'm certainly bothered by the technology you have, but your actions have posed no true threat. What you do is give your millions of fans hope, and hope is a drug that subdues. So the long history of rights progress is meaningless? The abolition of slavery, women's liberation, child labor laws, unions, indigenous restitution?